the, my presentation today is to tell you uh, the story of the federal government involvement in the areas of smart grid and the role that the federal government is playing and the potential uh, future opportunities that are just around the corner um, uh, that could um, help grow the smart grid. Uh, briefly, Canada has a very extensive energy portfolio. Um, as of 2014, we had over 110 gigawatts of generating capacity. 60% of that is from clean hydroelectricity. Uh, we have a very diverse uh, energy portfolio, extremely uh, lots of resources, uh, from crude oil to renewables, uh, nuclear, uh, natural gas. We also generate a lot of economic activity from, from our energy sector. 30% uh, of the exports are predominantly, where is it? are predominantly to, to the U.S., but we generate a lot of money, we generate a lot of economic activity, and we have a lot of uh, workers and employment. So the energy sector is crucial to Canada's economic growth and uh, economic well-being. Uh, Canada is a Commonwealth country. We have provinces, and we have a federal government, and we have a provincial governments and territorial governments, and we have shared responsibilities in, in terms of environmental uh, protection, environmental um, uh, policy, uh, and of course our energy uh, policy can be uh, led by the federal government, but it's also in certain areas, it's the uh, concerns of the provincial governments. And uh, when we're talking about smart grids crossing trans uh, borders, provincial borders, a lot of these players come in, in hand. So in terms of the landscape, it's, it's, it's um, um, uh, shared responsibilities, but also clear responsibilities per uh, department. Some uh, highlights, um, uh, Canada is ranked six uh, in terms of the most attractive destination in the world for clean energy investment. Uh, we have a very strong wind uh, growth market, uh, solar PV with a feed-in tariff uh, in a, one of our largest provinces in Ontario, um, um, spurred the growth of solar photovoltaics in Canada. Um, we have right now, as of 2016, uh, we have close to three gigawatt installed capacity. Uh, Bioenergy is becoming more and more, um, bioenergy for clean electricity is becoming more and more um, um, gaining more relevance and more importance in uh, Canada's R&D uh, uh, mandate. And of course, uh, Canada has uh, oceans and pollution reduction to some degree to the north, and uh, ocean energy tidal wave is also an area that we are investigating. Um, this is to show you that in Canada, the role of the government is, is a lot of times limited to facilitating um, uh, collaborations between different sectors in the economy. We have an international smart grid action network in which we participate, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it uh, down the line. In Canada, we have a mirror group called the Canadian Smart Grid Action Network, and, and Alex and Smart Grid Canada are important components of the, of the uh, network. The, the aim is to bring the stakeholders that are going to be engaged in promoting and developing and growing the smart grid activities in Canada to, to a common uh, platform where we share insights, we share information, we share uh, ideas, um, and uh, 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 we investigate ways of, uh, of helping to grow the appropriate policies that the federal government, working with the provincial counterparts, could enact to support the growth of the sector. And so we do a lot of uh, um, uh, activities related to raising awareness by developing um, market uh, reports or status reports in Canada. The last one we did was in 2014. Uh, we do a lot of learning, um, uh, analyzing, and applying what uh, we um, bring in from it, our international collaborations to share with the rest of Canadians, especially those stakeholders that are involved in the sector. Just uh, briefly, um, on the international scale, in terms of uh, smart grid-related activities, Canada is part of the uh, newly minted um, uh, IEA technology collaborative program called ISGAN, the International Smart Grid Action Network. When I say newly minted, it's not that it's new. It was uh, an initiative of the Clean Energy Ministerial. 
um, uh, and it was one of the uh, top most successful of the initiatives of the Clean Energy Ministerial. Uh, it's newly minted in the sense that the International Energy Agency has adopted it as a technology platform and therefore now it is an IEA TCP platform. ISGAN is uh, 23, 24 countries, member countries, including the European Union, uh, Asian countries, South Africa, North Americans, as well as many, many Europeans, and of course, India. India today, uh, yesterday, and the day before yesterday, and tomorrow are hosting the 13th Executive Committee meeting of ISGAN at uh, the Power Grid Corporations, and so India is an important player and an important component of this international collaboration. I'm not going to talk more about it because you can easily just Google it, but the idea is that Canada and the federal government, their involvement in ISGAN is to bring the experience and the information from these 23 member countries back to Canada to share it with our Canadian stakeholders. Um, we also have, um, uh, the federal government has a program to provide research to academic uh, institutions and uh, um, a big component of the research is uh, to promote uh, collaborations between uh, different universities working on the same areas of research. And I believe Dr. Bala Venkatesh, there he is. He's our director of the uh, Network on Energy Storage uh, housed at Ryerson University. And it's, it's, it's what I think is uh, one of the uh, uh, new networks that will have a very increasing uh, importance in uh, promoting uh, the advancing the uh, smart grid uh, scenario in Canada. Also, the federal government has an extremely important role in playing in standards development, and this is a, a, a technology Canadian smart grid roadmap that was developed. It's, it's, it's again, uh, to bring information to help facilitate the kind of activities that are needed to grow the market. And this is just an example of the kind of information that we released in 2014. We usually update the graphics, but this gives you an idea of what's happening in Canada in terms of the smart grid activities in all of the provinces and in all of the territories. This is easily downloadable, so you can download a PDF copy at, at no cost, of course. Uh, this is the kind of metrics that we tell you, uh, that, that we provide in that report, talking about advanced metering infrastructure, uh, new rate options, uh, demand response, um, um, smart meters. The province of uh, Quebec, the French province, is almost 100% smart meters over there. There's no um, um, manual. And again, we provide the kind, of the, kind of Hello? the kind of information that you have to go down with this as it goes down. We provide the kind of information uh, that would help the, uh, uh, the business and the market sector. Um, so uh, smart grid activities in Canada is not just um, 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 you know, talk for the federal government. It's important for us to quantify it, to qualify it, and, and to provide that information to uh, the stakeholders. Again, this is just to show you in terms of uh, R&D investment. Uh, we've seen quite a bit of uh, uh, increase in uh, uh, investing in the areas of smart grid within the federal government, and um, my lab, which is here in Varenne, is the, is the main lab that is actually undertaking research on smart grids. So this is just to show you briefly about our, our, our group. Uh, we are three laboratories uh, within uh, Camet Energy under the energy innovation sector. Uh, this is what we call the dark uh, laboratory. It does carbon coal, clean coal sequestration and, and carbon with the tar sands in Alberta. Ontario is our biggest laboratory. Uh, it houses uh, uh, R&D in industrial processes, buildings, communities, bioenergy, and renewables other than photovoltaics. And of course, Varenne is on buildings, heat pumps, refrigeration. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Red Screen uh, software, but the Red Screen International software was developed here in Varenne. And of course, smart grids and photovoltaics is our mandate, our core mandate. Uh, just briefly, um, uh, the work that we do within Varen in the areas of smart grid research involves active distribution networks, uh, sustainable microgrids, virtual power plants, and of course PV integration to the grid as well as PV integration on distributed um, uh, resources, for example, as in buildings. And within buildings, we're talking about uh, net zero energy. Again, the model that we use is we, to, uh, we do R&D, we do uh, simulations, 
we uh, understand codes and standards and we work with national and international collaborations to bring us to a point where we can fund uh, first time demonstrations to, to uh, proof of concept. Internationally, we're interested in uh, collaborating in the areas of photovoltaics and renewables, um, energy efficiency, and uh, in areas of smart grid and storage. Um, we uh, share data, we uh, collaborate in joint R&D projects, um, and of course, we, we provide information. Just briefly, and I'm not sure if this is gonna be covered or was covered or will be covered in the uh, plenary, but if you don't know about it by now, you should. Specifically, this is about mission innovation. This was an, uh, an initiative announced in the Paris Conference of Parties about a year ago. And the idea was that um, um, 20, right now 23 countries actually signed off um, on committing themselves to double their clean energy investments in over five years. So for Canada, this spells within five years, we should have about a billion dollars of Canadian uh, investment in R&D in Canada. Now, what this means is that um, these 23 countries said it's important for us to invest in clean energy and it's important for us to identify the areas of investment. Canada is extremely positioned to work across a wide spectrum of technology readiness levels as enablers, funders, uh, supporters, as well as performers. Under Mission Innovation uh, in, in Morocco at the COP22, they further defined what their investments should be in and they came up with seven key challenges. The top priority of these 23 countries in mission innovation is challenge number one, which deals with smart grid innovation challenge. So the message to take away is that over the next five years, 23 countries, 24 countries, including India, have committed themselves to doubling their investments in R&D, and their top priority is smart grids. So I think uh, this group here is uh, extremely positioned, well positioned to take advantage of this opportunity. And it so happens that one of the co-leaders of, of the mission innovation number one is Dr. Sanjay uh, Bhaipai from India. Uh, he, along with uh, Professor uh, Yibu and Luciano Martini, are uh, the co-leads. And this was about a less than three weeks ago at the preparatory meeting to the SEM, the Clean Energy Ministerial number uh, eight meeting in Beijing, which is coming up in June. The Mission Innovation people decided that they will have what, we, what they call deep dive workshops to further define what they wanna do within challenge one. And they have uh, identified four kind of challenges, regional grid innovation, distribution grid innovation, microgrid innovation, and cross innovation. I, I don't wanna go more into details about this because they're still being developed, but the idea is that this group is well on its way to further uh, uh, work with Indians, with the Indian uh, uh, sector, um, and with the other 22, 23 countries to further promote the work of uh, smart grids. And on that note, what I would like to do is just introduce you to uh, my director, Dr. Lisa Dinyard, uh, our project uh, manager in the areas of smart grid, and of course, Alex, as three key Canadians that you can uh, communicate, that you can uh, contact with uh, information or requests regarding the smart grid work that we're doing in Canada. And I wanna thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Any questions for Joseph yes, here? As I am an optimistic guy about everything, so uh, you tell, ab tell us about uh, mission uh, innovation in which ca carbon capture and its use and storage is on ongoing. So how India can be incorporated in this carbon capture, use and storage? Yeah, well, th that's a very good question. And, and you're asking a question that I think will be answered within a year because the uh, uh, people that are undertaking the mission innovation, the leaders, um, I'm, to be quite honest, I'm only interested in, in mission innovation number one and number two, because one, number two deals with rural electrification, which is basically microgrids. 
and there's a lot of lessons learned from uh, uh, you know what we're doing within the smart grids. Um, and of course, challenge one is about smart grid. The clean coal and sequestration, I'm not sure who is leading that, to be quite honest, but it's up to the leaders and it's up to the member countries that are participating in challenge uh, number, uh, I think, four or five, that's the clean coal. It's up to them to define what they want to do. And if, if they feel that a part of the definition involves working with other challenges, then so be it. And if, if challenge one believes that they can work with other challenges, including clean coal, then they'll come up with some kind of a, a mechanism to collaborate. Uh, so I'm not sure I can give you the answer that you need right now, but I think if you keep um, uh, abreast of these developments, and, and they're evolving quickly. The, the Clean Energy Ministerial is meeting in June in Beijing. A lot of those mission innovation challenges are also meeting on the parallel side, which means they're gonna be moving fast. Now, I don't know what the fiscal year in India is, but in, in Canada, it's from March to April, or April to March, and the budgets usually come down sometime in February, sometime in March. I, I don't know, uh, Alex, did we pass the budget this year? Not yet. So which means when the budget is passed, there will be some component of it re related to providing funds to mission innovation. And when the money passes, uh, when the government passes these kinds of funds, we have to be prepared. The community has to be prepared to take advantage of these opportunities. So there will be money coming to do mission innovation, which with more refining, with more, um, with more uh, definite uh, project focused uh, outlook. Any more questions? Why don't you introduce yourself and then ask a question? Yeah, I will. Uh, um, well, we already introduced to each other, but I'm uh, Ivo Hunink. I'm uh, currently a graduate student at Rural Spark, and we were look looking at um, bottom-up energy solutions. Uh, and uh, for me, my thesis is, is specifically on how the innovation system, and so all the parties that are uh, working on the development on this, how are they collaborating and doing this in a responsible way so that uh, in the end, the end users can be uh, satisfied with the product as well as everyone else. Um, and that's where I, my question is based on actually as well. Um, you were talking about the federal government of Canada um, participating, well, um, facilitating, being the facilitator for collaborations uh, uh, for industry uh, universities. Uh, and I was wondering if, if there's some sort of framework that is used for this uh, to guide all these that's what, what I'm looking at. Uh, framework, I, I <laughs> we have, we have in, wi within our programming uh, mandate and within our project mandates, our funders, uh, there's a very strong component. Um, uh, a part of the criteria of receiving the fund is that we do research. It's not pure research. It's more applied research. And applied research means you have to have one foot in the market, one foot with the industry. You need to identify your industry partners. So the mandate of Anarcan is to work on, on applied R&D with industry partners. So this is a part of, the, uh, a part of our uh, mandate. Uh, if we wanna succeed, we have to include our industry partners, otherwise we're not gonna get our funding. So I don't know if that is a framework, but it's definitely a, a drive. And, and it makes perfect sense because we're not gonna do pure research for the sake of just doing research without any kind of growing the market. That's again, a part of our priority is to grow the market, to create jobs. And we do that by, by you know, strict mandates to work with the industry. It, it depends. We have programs where we where the R and D is handed off to um, um, uh, program delivery uh, agents. So, for example, we have a program called the R two thousand House, or the Energy Star Rating for Homes, where the R and D was undertaken by the technical uh, specialists, but delivering it to the customers was done by another department or by another group within our department. So we do engage customers and end users. We do engage industry. It depends on the nature of the work and, and, and the um, objectives of, of what our mandate is. Uh, 